What's up? Liam from Power House Miniatures. How you doing? So this is a video miniature painting tutorial on painting red. Basically it's just red space marine armour. Um, this is Sevatar of the Night Lord's base. The actual guys uh, over here basically it's just this one. But yeah, it's just a base for now. I thought it'd be a cool opportunity to show off the red armour and some of the blending, some of the chips and stuff that I do um, when I'm painting red. So if you want to join along we've got Mornfang Brown, Cantor Blue, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, and Blood for the Blood God. So the mid-tone, if you want, is Mephiston Red. The guy's been painted with two layers of Mephiston Red so far, and they're <clears throat> completely dry now over a black undercoat. And then I did US Army Grey Vallejo model colour uh, as a like a pre-highlight, like a pre-shading with a zenithal highlight. So I've done a previous painting tutorial video on zenithal highlight, and basically a zenith is uh, pointing the sky directly above the observer so it's um, like an astronomical thing I think or at least that's what the internet told me it was <laughs> um, so yeah just directly above with grey so it gives it like a pre-shaded effect if you don't know what pre-shading is bang that into google there's a million people that can explain it way better than me so basically that's my red recipe so I'd use that for a few different things uh, well near enough everything for red some people would go to fire dragon bright instead of the uh, wild rider red or as well and uh, it's too much of a contrast for me, but sometimes you do, you know, if you just depends what sort of style you what sort of effects you're going for. So in the end, you know, I might add uh, I might add that in. In fact, I'll just put it there, was it? Fire Dragon Bright. Uh, just as like a, a thing. It's too strong in the colour spectrum, basically, it's too high up, you including yellow too much. Um and altogether if you did add yellow in the end as an edge highlight, you could you know it makes it look too contrasting again, it's just a certain style. So anyway, so this guy's got two layers of Mephiston red. Um, highlight really really like Mephiston Red, it's one of my favourite red colours. So first I'm going to show you about how I do some of the blending with it um, and it's a layering blending sort of effect with basically paints right out of the pot so it dries really quick so it's like a speed blending thing, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, I've never seen really anybody else doing a similar thing but that doesn't mean they don't so if this is your technique and I've kind of stolen it then uh, well I'm sorry I guess <laughs> So here we go, I've got Mephiston Red, no sorry, Evil Sun Scarlet, straight out of the pot with, um, so I'm using a chisel brush, like the medium base brush from Citadel, one of the new ones. Um, so yeah, got in the middle of the model, so now I'm going to photograph it from like there, so I basically, when that's focused in, I want the highlights to be in the very centre of the legs from where I'm looking at the model like now. So basically just like this. I mean, so it, it all lines up right in the center, the center of this bit of the foot, center of the uh, the toe section, and the center rim of the outside of the foot. And then I'm going to pick the top edge of this like that, and split it in half with the color sort of thing. The pot again. Um, and the middle of this leg, where you're looking at it now. So again, I'm trying to get my hands in the thing because last time I did a painting black armor tutorial. I might, when my hands got in the way, the camera unfocused, focused in on like the tips of my scruffy fingers <laughs> so yeah, right down the very centre like that so you know when you look at it now, it's like all in all in a neat line um, across the, obviously the same symmetrical edge of the top bit of the toe and then the rim around the edge so again, if I was doing this for myself um, I would do more layers uh, and make sure that like, you know, between these layers you get a bit more of a transition, so I'm going to do this bottom corner of this side so it lines up with the uh, loin, groin section, whatever. So just a bit in the centre of that, of the chest plate, a bit around the neck. Again, super quick, super rough. This isn't obviously how I'd normally do it. I'd just speed it up a little bit because you don't want to watch me for like 40 minutes, I'm sure. So with the brush angle, for example, just on the arm there, I've got the brush like here sort of thing, and I'm going straight across so that I've got like uh, and again, I keep my stupid fingers out of the shot. It go like directly across, all in one motion, and then it lines up the light. Again, it's on the tips of the fingers in the center of the hand. I think the hand there would be silver, so that's a bit of a different thing. So we're going for a classic Blood Angel scheme because he's got the golden helmet. So I will probably go through and do like black trims around the shoulder pad and stuff. But just to show you. So again from there, if the light's in the centre here, so that's the angle I'm going to photograph it from, Sevatar will be stood like there sort of thing from straight on, and he's, he's facing like this way so it gets a, um, a cross section of all these features. So from there, this middle bit of the leg is facing you, this centre bit of the thing 
uh, the thigh, this bit of the groin, that bit of the chest, you know what I mean, this bit of the, the chest plate, this bit of the arm. So right, so where we are from there, right in the very centre, it'd be like there. Right, so you can do it real quick with this chiseled thing. Um, really, really like that brush, speeds up a lot, and then right across the top, there, and then a bit on the hand. So again, keeping my stupid hand out of the way, because I keep doing that. Um, across the top of the fingers, and then the top of there. So there you go, that's pretty much it. So that's the first layer done. Now, because I use um, it straight out of the pot and just water it down with the water straight on the brush, and obviously these brushes can hold a lot of water, otherwise I'd be using the palette with the water, or uh, Lumion Medium. By the time you've finished with the hand and the, or the shoulder pad, the legs are dry again. So really quickly again, um, I would do more than one layer and then blend the layers together. So just for example, on this section of the thigh, you can see the the very like the strong transition if you want between the red and the Mephiston red and the wild no what's it called evil sun scarlet and the Mephiston red you can see the line um just there where the paint starts and stops so that's what you're trying to get rid of but if you did successive concentric layers like that those they appear to fade away which saves you a load of time and stops you having to blend them in or you can get another layer of Mephiston red so I thought I'll, I'll just show you on this one and I'll go through and tidy it up before I sell this model on but we've got like just on there for example a big thick layer in the middle and we'll wait for that to dry and then I'll show you what I mean right the centre and again it's kind of this one's it's quite cartoony but it's if you do it wrong um, it's kind of obnoxious it looks kind of funny or looks really really quick um, like you've kind of rushed and my excuse is obviously that I am doing this for a painting tutorial. <laughs> okay, I'll just start doing this bit. So yeah, they got second layer of it. So right now we've got a real strong, um, a real strong line between Evilson Scarlet and the Mephiston Red. So you put a little layer in, or in these little corners, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a shade. Well, so again, another speed tip, speed tip for you if you want is that um, this thing here, while the highlights are drying, you can go in with the. Um, with the shade. So I'm using Cantor Blue again straight out of the pot. Your basic two options with the painting is either to go straight from the pot or to mix two colours from the pot on the palette. So I'm going to, in fact, I'll just put in the, the lid like that with a bit of water. Then I'm going to water that one down about 50 50. And then you use like the inside of the lid as a bit of a palette, I guess. Um, so on the parts facing the ground, like there. I'm gonna do no, again, I'll make sure my stupid fingers are on the shot. I'm gonna do a layer of the blue. Again, super quick. I would spend a lot more time on this in real life if I was painting anything um anything crazy or anything like super high level. Obviously. And just I'm trying to improve all the time anyway. So I'm trying to uh do that a bit more often. So it is in exactly the same sort of way, like there, that I've done it from top to bottom. So that the majority of the paint goes to the bottom. I'm going almost perpendicular and painting in like vertically sort of thing. Um, and then if you come in, no matter what, just stay consistent with it. So that the, all the model is painted in a similar style consistently. And then at the very least, even if you aren't technically a great painter, the consistency will be there. Um, which again, always looks appealing. Um, and some of the, the photos that you can take can be kind of misleading. And some people edit their photos as well, which is the thing. Or mess around with the brightness, which a lot of people do, but that's, uh, that one's okay, I think. So again, just painting Cantor Blue into the recesses. So again, you can see it's in the same sort of style, but like a different colour. Really cartoony, really garish um, for now. And like I said, if you spend a long time blending it in, you get the idea. But really, really quickly, you get a hint, just hint at um, like a slightly more artistic style or at least a knowledge of the colours and stuff. So straight away there you've got like a thing and say so even though it's only two, three layers and you've not really spent any time blending it in, altogether it looks like you have. Um which is half the thing. And like I said, uh, sometimes on the photos it can look misleading. So there you go. So we've got um Cantor Blue, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet. So now I'm gonna go up to the Wild Rider Red and at the same time as that I'm sort of painting within the light lines, I'm gonna go for a little bit of the edge highlighting and then this layer you add some of the chips in at the same time to speed it up even more. So we've got Windsor and Newton, uh, in fact we'll go for the triple zero, I'm going to push the boat out. Windsor and Newton, triple zero, series seven, finest sable brush. 
got a bit of the old uh, wild, wild red red again straight out of the pot mixed a little bit with water so it's um, a bit more of a, a thin consistency and then concentric shapes again same as the previous ones so right that's focused there so we go straight down the, I'm going to try and keep my stupid fingers out of this shot straight down the centre like that bit more paint for this one right down the middle of the thigh middle of the shin so they're basically all together from I'm going from like a perpendicular angle to get the thinnest line you can go almost straight through like that evenly you know what I'm saying so that like it's just about being consistent with the way that the light falls on the model. It's so like inside of there, outside of the toe, and then on the rim of the toe as well. So that all together you've got, you can just draw with a brush, a straight line all the way down. And we do the same with the other leg. So you paint concentric, which within the shape you painted before. And then straight down the center of the leg. Again, just watching the thing of the camera so I don't get my fingers in. A bit across the bottom of the edge where it'd, uh, where it'd catch. There you go. Now, other areas, uh, like outside of this bit of the, uh, I suppose that's the groin plate, or whatever. So like I said, my excuse is that I'll be doing these at a, um, I'll be doing a much slower in real life. This isn't a commission or anything, this is uh, just a model for myself. So, and again, straight up the arm. So I'm going, that's the angle I'm going from, so I think like a 45 degree angle. I'm going to make sure that the light lines all join up. So basically I'm just going to draw a line across that. So it's the edge of the elbow part, the centre of the wrist, and a bit across the upper arm and the tips of each finger the tip of the thumb um, there you go, right, and then this bit again, so it'll be from this little bit of the old chest and then right down the centre of the shoulder pad, so my fingers are in the way is that focused? yeah it is, and there you go there's already a scratch there so we'll do it in the centre like this And then down the arm and the fingers. There you go. Right. So all together, that's the blended style, right? So already it looks like you've spent a long time blending it and you honestly haven't. I'm not saying it's trickery in people, but you know, you know what's going on. It looks awesome. So it's just uh, how I do it really fast and like I said I keep saying it because I'm trying to convince myself, but <laughs> in uh, in on you know, on a commission or something that was like higher level out that you know more colours, more layers, generally just longer spent painting. There you go, so uh, edge highlights, I'm going to go like from this angle, you know, um, at right angles. So that's my fingers in the shot, isn't it? And then so I always find um, you can go much lighter in the first one, and then if you want, you can do another layer. It's like you can you can add, but you can't take away sort of things. So like it's always it's always much better to do. Um, Thinner layers, and you can like add it on if necessary. So again, just going around again, just the, the obvious edges that you can see on the uh, on the armor panels. Uh, this one, so this one's already done. So I'll just do a little edge there, uh, and then across the old wrist. 
There we go. So in terms of chips and scratches now, um, again, water down paint and then go away so you like flick, so you go kind of fast. So just for example, on this part of the leg, we're going to go like that. So like, there you can just see a couple of chips and scratches across the edges of armour like that. So it's just about coming in at random angles and then kind of fast. And I find that coming in sort of fast like that is always, um, you get a thin line. And then of course if you're, if you're always like this towards the model, like perpendicular to the model, um, you get the very finest part of the brush, like the thinnest part of the, the top of the brush like there. We'll just do super quick. More paint. So I can just put them in random places. Um, some people do, if they are blending, like a bit like this, but it's cartoony sort of blending style. Some people will do a um, not not again not a, not a trick, not a cheat, or whatever. But it's a um, if you've done made mistakes with the blending, you cover them up with scratches. <laughs> Like little errors in in the blendings and stuff. That's how you do it. So some people do that. You can just go crazy with it. You can go as much or as little as you want. Same as always, though. Um, you can add, but you can't take away. So already looking pretty good, damn cool. Um, that's pretty much it. So again, round the edges and stuff, you do a different one. Um, round the edges, I would start by Wild Rider Red, but some people don't. Um, and I will I will show what I mean with the blood for the blood god in just a second. So we've got these uh, Cantor Blue. You could be replaced with Mornfang Brown to do a similar sort of thing. So I will show you on this other side just once. Um, it's a very, it's a very similar sort of effect. So like there, where we've got um, just a section of the red, you paint the brown in like that. Now eventually when I paint this model, I'm going to be using a lot of brown in the bases for like rust and things like that. So I'm going to go with blue, you know, so just in between where the red isn't sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go for blue, uh, brown sorry, on the base quite a lot. So I'm not going to use brown in the model too much because it's going to be the same sort of brown. So you do a little bit like in there or something, but you know, you get the idea. So straight away, if you wanted to push the contrast a little bit, um, inside that like the very finest uh, part, I would do a bright spot of just Fire Dragon Bright. So I'll show you. The legs are really good because it's um, it's angled right, if you know what I mean. So like there, we've got, uh, in fact, no, in fact, I'll show you this one because it's like different from directly above. So we've got one in the center of this entire part of the leg. So if you've got a straight line down um, with the Wild Rider Red, cut that line in half sort of thing. Just do half the line again with Fire Dragon Bright. Like that. So that all together, you've got a long straight line. And then we'll do the same on this one. While that one's drying, may as well. Got the thing out. And then, so it's going to be from like this angle sort of thing. So it's going to be there, there there, right at the very bottom, and then again just lining up across the feet. So, in fact, no, I'll, just, I'll carry that on while I'm here, because I'm going to do it eventually anyway. So we got uh, this little chip and scratch, a little bit across the top. So yeah, like tessellating concentric shapes is like a really big thing. Um, especially with blending, some of the some of the armors. Red seems to work really well. Blue does really well as well. I don't know why. I think I'm sure. I don't know who it was. I'm sure I read somewhere that blue, some of the pigments don't dry properly, so that you can. It's easier to blend with. It might be either blue or red, but one of them is like that. So that's really uh, really good to know. It's like easier to work with. So there you go. We got. Um, Basically, a full range of the colours now. We've got the Cantor Blue, which, and again, you can replace purple in with that. Blue, brown, whatever, or you can just mix in the colours. Big, that's the big two options, obviously. Paint straight out of the pot or paint mixed 
with other paints, which is a thing. So I, I usually shoot them straight out of the pot, especially for this, which is quick. So we've been going on for obviously a bit too long now. So we've got the um, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, and then Fire Dragon Bright. And if you wanted to keep going, inside that little line, you could do like uh, a yellow or something. And if you were going to do that, you would give it a glaze of Blood for the Blood God. So if this is dry, I'm just going to have a just quick check whether it is. Yeah, I'll just show you on a part of the leg. Um, if you did go up to the yellow, you can glaze over the Blood for the Blood God over the top, which then blends everything back together, which makes the contrast not quite as uh, not quite as bright or not quite as annoying. So we got again. I'll just show you on this one bit of the leg, um, and then I'll do the rest like for myself off screen. So just like a dot basically at the top of each bit like that within the line that you painted previously. Um, I cock that one up a little bit. Right, like so. I'm just going to tidy this one up. So there, for me, that's too much contrast. That's um, garish, and it's even though it's, I suppose if you did it skillfully, it would look okay. It's um, it's too far on an, a model altogether. But again, even from there, it looks. Pretty goddamn awesome, just because it's like it's. I suppose it's colour theory and that, but you know, it's got blood for the blood god. Um, gonna give that a bit of a, a shake up. So, while well, that's drying, uh, some of the chips on the inside, like on this one, which is obviously already mod like modelled into the um, armour, you would put silver or black, and then you could do streaks of brown. So. Um, so I'll just I'll show you while this yellow's drying. It's just all the stuff that I do for red, basically, like all the, all the various bits. So inside, oh excuse me. So inside of this bit, here, um, you do a line directly to the ground. So we've got where's the scratch? There it is. So we've got like straight down like this. Uh, and where are we? There. It's like. Bit down to the ground. On the inside of this bit of the leg, you could do the same sort of thing. Where it looks like grimy sort of streaks. We'd go like this. So it looks like it's like rust and damage and stuff. And if you went in with like XP88 over the top, um, it'd look good. So. That's uh, dry enough now. So we got the so you can see that yeah it's very yellow, very orange. It's too much. So at the slightly watered down layer of blood for the blood god, all over this uh, well it's his right leg in it left view. It really fades off the yellow and orange transitions. Like that. Gives it a very rich red sort of colour. And then now you've done this part of the leg, clean the brush off, and then rub away a little bit of the blood for the blood guard where it is, or you can yeah, you can just move it around and sort of manipulate it a little bit. Like that. So there you go. So all together, the harsh transitions move um you know, they're blended back into each other. And while this is still wet, it's obviously difficult to see it, but it gives it that glossy finish and it looks really good. So that's it. Uh, that's pretty much everything I want to show you. We've got red blending, chips, scratches, grime, dirt, all sorts of stuff like that. But all together, this is my, that's my little tip. That's my little little thing. Blood for the Blood God. A little glaze of that over the top gives it a nice glossy effect and everything. So there are the paints. There's the colours. Bang, Powerhouse Miniatures to Google. You'll find my entire thing, website, Facebook, podcast, YouTube, all of it. You'll find everything by there. But that is pretty much it. So if there's anything else you want to see, let me know. Any other tutorials and I'll see what I can do. Other than that, cheers for watching and uh, have a good day.